Imagine you're on a treasure hunt. The map you are given has a couple places where X marks the spot and you'll find buried treasure. One of the places may have just a few coins, while another place has the jackpot you've been dreaming of. But how will you know which X on the map has the treasure that you're looking for? This uncertainty is often felt when we're trying to figure out how much carbon is in the soil, and sometimes we're even missing the treasure map that tells us where to look. We want to know how much carbon is stored in the soil because it's a sign of how well the land can support growing plants. Soil carbon is also a key solution for combating climate change. The soil carbon originally comes from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that gets captured by plants during photosynthesis. Then, as the plants decay, this carbon gets locked away in the soil as microbes decompose the plants. However, when soil is used too intensively, the soil carbon can decrease and it takes a long time to build it back up. Through my research, I'm building a soil carbon treasure map for the Canadian prairies and the upper Midwest United States in an area known as the Prairie Pothole region. This area features a unique type of wetland known as prairie potholes or sloughs that were formed after the glass glaciers retreated over 10,000 years ago. These aren't the potholes that you accidentally hit on the road when you're driving to work. But like a pothole in the road, prairie pothole wetlands hold water on the landscape, and this moisture helps accumulate soil carbon over time. You can see in this image the ponds of the prairie pothole wetlands, but there are some wetlands that are hard to spot because this water has dried up. The carbon is still locked away in these wetlands that seem invisible to us standing on the ground. To help spot wetlands, I use satellite imagery that shows ponds over the past seven years. Then I go out to the field and take soil cores from the wetlands as shown here. At the top of the core, we see a dark colored soil, and this dark color tells us that there's a lot of soil carbon there. As we move lower through the core, the color gradually gets lighter, and there's less soil carbon there. The soil color changes back to dark again though, at about 53 centimeters, and this is because carbon got trapped away here a long time ago. This soil carbon that we see deep in the soil is the treasure that makes prairie pothole wetlands so important for storing carbon. This carbon would otherwise be carbon dioxide in the atmosphere if it wasn't locked away in the soil. Some wetlands hold more soil carbon than others though, so my next steps to improve this soil carbon treasure map is to see how the amount of soil carbon is impacted by the climate, the amount of water in the wetland pond, as well as wetland drainage. By digging deeper into our understanding of soil carbon in prairie pothole wetlands, we can prioritize which wetlands should be protected to preserve the soil carbon and maintain the ecosystem services that wetlands provide. Thank you.